Hello and welcome to Retro Gaming Banter. In this video we check out the Div MMC Future interface for the ZX Spectrum range of home computers. The Div MMC Future allows you to load cassette tape software without the need for either a cassette tape or a tape deck. Cassette tapes can be unreliable now and you also have to wait bleeding ages for them to load. The Div MMC Future lets you load the image files of cassette tapes with the added bonus of near instant loading. The Div series of interfaces have been around for some time. Here is my old Div MMC from some years ago, which itself is a derivative of a Div IDE, an even older model. And now more recently we have the Div MMC Future, which is based on the original Div MMC. The first thing you will notice is that it comes enclosed in a plastic injection moulded case. It is available in classic black, plus two grey and future white colours. It keeps the board protected from accidental touches and the Sinclair rainbow stripe on the side helps it keep it looking like an authentic peripheral for the spectrum. On the front of the case are two buttons. The first is an illuminated NMI button which shows the status of the Div MMC and can be pressed to access the menu. The button below that will reset the spectrum. On the top of the interface you can find a full size SD card slot which accepts FAT16 and FAT32 formats. I am not sure what size card it will accept up to, but you shouldn't really need more than a 8 or 16 gig card. To the right is the Kempston joystick port, which is a godsend as it lets you use a much wider variety of joysticks such as uh, Commodore ones. Previously you may have had to use another interface to add support for this, and it makes for a bulky and unstable connection when used with say the older Div MMC interface plugged in. Let's just call the Div MMC future uh, the future from now on. So one big addition to the future is that it's a jumperless board. This means that to use the future on different model spectrums as well as updating the firmware, you don't have to mess around with uh, jumpers or dip switches. Trust me, it was a pain in the ass trying to remember which settings you needed when using different models and updating the firmware. Uh, with the future, it is simply plug and play and for updating the firmware, essentially just copy over some files, run a tape file and uh, yeah, it's updated in a piece of cake. That's all there really is to it, so let's get it plugged in and powered up. Once booted up, you are presented with your familiar Spectrum screen. In this case, I'm using my Spectrum Plus 3 for easy video capture. On the Plus 3, it will bypass the boot menu and go straight into 48K mode, but with the full 128K of memory accessible. Pressing the NMI button will go straight to the file browser on your SD card. Pressing the H keyboard key will bring up the help screen, which gives an overview of what you can do. Returning back to the file browser, you can use the up and down keyboard keys to navigate the files and folders and enter to select. The future supports a number of file formats including .tap, .zae and uh, .sna. Uh, I mainly use the TAP and ZAE formats as so these are the most common. You simply navigate to a supported file format and press the enter key and the program is pretty much instantly loaded. No more waiting 20 minutes for the tape to read and load the program. Snapshots brings emulator style save load state functions to the original hardware which is uh, pretty great. At any time you can press the NMI button to return to the file browser. From here you can use the snapshot function which allows you to save the current memory contents to a file on the SD card. Simply press the S keyboard key to save the file. It will name it snap0000.sna. You can resume back to the running software by pressing the spacebar, reset or turn off the spectrum for example.
When you want to resume where you made the snapshot, simply navigate back to the file, highlight it, and you can press the V keyboard button to preview the snapshot screen, uh, which is a handy feature. Or you can press the enter key to load the snapshot into memory and resume exactly where you left off. If you have used any emulators, then you will know how uh, useful snapshots can be. Uh, so yeah, this is a great feature. Cassette tape multi-loading is supported, but you may find the occasional game not working. However, this does seem to be more of a Spectrum plus 3 issue. For example, on R-Type, the multi-load works perfectly. On a couple of other games, I could not get it working, as it required pressing play on the tape deck. That is pretty much the general overview of the Div MMC future, which will be enough for most users. The Div MMC future is a great bit of kit if you have any model of Spectrum. Uh, with the jumperless board and integrated Kempston joystick interface, which is all enclosed in a authentic looking case, it is a must for any specy owner. If you do have a Spectrum Plus 3, then an alternative could be a GoTech drive emulator to load disk images. But you do lose features such as uh, snapshots, which are quite useful. I have GoTex on most of my other disk-based computers and never really desired it for the Spectrum as uh, yeah, the tape images load near instantly. Uh, however, you should be able to use both a Future and GoTex together if you want to. You can find out more information on the Div MMC Future on the Future Was 8-Bit website. Uh, the link is in the description. It usually retails for 70 quid and is currently on sale for 60. So do take advantage of it whilst you can, as it's a really great bit of kit for your specy. That wraps up this review of the Div MMC Future. We hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And whilst you're at it, get the subscribe button to keep up with our retro videos. And we hope to see you in the next one.